Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding, motivational. Mr. Maker, what's going on? Not none, you know, my dad walk on. Man, you know what? You ain't the only one lovely in here today, man. We got two lovely ladies in here, and I'm by myself, y'all. Check it, man. Project Barbie's in the building. Whoa, what up, what up, what up, what up? We live and well, New Orleans. Man, stop playing. New you heard Orleans. what she said. New Orleans. Yeah, uh, boss talk. Wait, how y'all do it? New Orleans. Hey, yeah. we That's Orleans. exactly how Texans do it. <laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> That's how y'all say it, huh? Man. New Orleans. Man, I seen you. I seen you on Beehive. I seen you. I seen you That's doing me. your thing, man. Like I see that you working with KLC, man. That's like my yes, brother, yes, man. Yes, yes, like yes. that's my brother from another mother, man. This guy right here. We just hey, we met and just bam, we just became partner partners, man. There we go, man. So so just you are a to me, you know, people in this city. Every time you look around, they know who you are because of who your brother is, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and it's yep. just like you. You basically. You have to live now uh, in the fact of the the. It's like Coretta Scott King, right? When right. when her when Martin Luther King passed away, uh, or, or at his demise, and then people still, you know what I mean? Keep respect you, yeah. They they respect you, but they keep they gonna always bring it up. They go, mm-hmm. it's the elephant always in the room, and you just have to kind of just live your life around it. Your children, your mother, your mm-hmm. your family. So we are gonna run down through that today, if it's okay with you. Oh, of course. We're different. We are gonna figure out everything right here on Boss Talk One Hundred and One, where the bosses talk, how y'all came up together, how to family was mm-hmm. that's how i rock let's you know? do it so man thank you for coming on boss talk 101 oh, thank y'all for having me you man. can have anybody else but look who you chose man <laughs> stop playing god put it's you me. in that seat man we don't go. play no games man so check it man we want to just get down in, into the business like how was it coming up in new orleans man as a kid what part of new orleans did you you know start at how were your parents i mean like yeah come up in your house we want to y'all in your everything. business i'm about to say y'all won't get all up in my butt. business yeah. boyfriends okay. all of that all that okay <laughs> all of that so cool um i'm from uptown new orleans i am from the magnolia project six co for show if you did not know so um coming up in new orleans it is very very different from any other place in the world it's a great place because the culture is all so strong And I come from not only the hip hop culture of New Orleans, I also come from the jazz or what we call it as brass um, here, second line culture. And then it's just, it's, I'm a whole lot of what they call gumbo. So I mixed it with a whole lot of different genres of music. So my mom is actually a lady bug jumper. That is a second line club. I was just about to say, what is that? It's a second line club. So that's a, um, a second line is like a, a dance uh, a culture so usually it really started when people would use it like after funerals as like a procession and um now you have like social aid and pleasure clubs who get together as a group wear nice clothes and go out on the street for like mm-hmm. five hours mm-hmm. and they second line they de- they do this dance and so, um new orleans is filled with a lot of dance a lot of dance, music a lot of music and dance and food okay. like so a lot of culture like they call it like creole because mm-hmm. it's all mixed together and um i come from that uh my stepdad is rebirth brass band they have a grammy for the music wow yeah so it's like i come from a whole lot of culture then you got my brother who is like one of the biggest artists from New Orleans from his so time. You, you said stepdad, so yeah, I, I guess. Say, so you, where is your dad? So my dad has actually passed away. Okay. Um, my dad was mostly in prison a lot. Okay. So most of my life, my dad was in prison for selling drugs. So yeah. shout out I to. Mean, so you didn't really have a relationship with him. We had a relationship till I was like four. Uh, my dad was the first person that bought me luxury items. My first pair of Gucci. You remember that stuff? My first pair of Gucci loafers. I was the first girl Nuh-uh. on, that on was a Uptown. Young age. I was the first girl Uptown on Washington with Gucci loafers. And he didn't even know what he did. Yeah. <laughs> my daddy was a drug dealer, though. But uh, and my dad went to jail probably like when I was five or six. Uh, mm-hmm. And he came back out actually when I was 
16. So I was preparing. But how to, um, was that? Because then for a man who hadn't been there all, almost well, all your life. And, and then, then he's, well, my brother, you know, that's, that's, that's why I go hard for my brother. A lot of people don't understand it. You know, they say, Hey, she's controversial, but you got to understand that's, that's been like my father. Because mm -hmm. my daddy's been buying bars So that's been like my daddy so But did your daddy come out acting like your daddy At the time when he came out You know people be like okay Well you've been gone all my life You can't now come act like you my daddy yeah. No I, I think No he didn't come back trying to be like awesome dad. He came back to, to try to replace that time mm -hmm. And the things that he were doing Were you know they were important at that moment Like teaching me how to drive or so you accepted everything with open arms. Yeah, I mean, because okay, he, I, like I said, my daddy was the first person who taught me with luxuries. Like I remember catching the bus on Canal Street with my daddy to go get the new Jordans when they came out. Like so, you know, I didn't have any bad beef with him. That's you know, good. he was a, you know, he, like I, I always go back to like people say you can't expect people to know how to be a dad or be. Someone because if they I don't have, have an example exactly. on how to really show them. So But that's yeah. good that you know that now, but you know, as a kid, a mm -hmm. lot of kids wasn't thinking like that. Right, right. You know, some kids would have been mad, well, you missed all of my life, you wasn't here, you messed up, but you know, you should have been here for me type of thing, you know? I was appreciative that when he but did come good. back, like I said in the picture, he was doing the things that that's like good. my friends' dads were doing with right. them, teaching them how to drive, you know, bringing them to prom, things like, you know, the things that he didn't see that sucks, but to step in at that moment, That's which good. was my biggest moment, you know, senior year, I appreciate that. Are you that. his only girl? Only daughter. Oh, okay. That's cool. Only How did daughter. he pass away? My dad died from um, stomach cancer. So my dad was actually back in jail when he passed. My dad passed behind bars. Mm. Yeah. My dad passed behind bars. How did that affect you? Um, I wish we had more time together. I wish like when I got to college graduation, like I wish... He was there to see those moments, you know, but we do it for him now. Mm -hmm. That's good. And you got an awesome angel. stepdad. Yeah. So my stepdad has been, you know, I've been had, like, like I said, it's always been somebody there that, mm -hmm. a you male know, role me. model yeah. and stuff like that. That's good because a lot of people end up, you know, on the wrong side, so mm -hmm. to say, because they didn't have that positive male role model, especially being females. You still Just need being a that female. positive role model as a man, so you you don't end up in those wrong relationships. You know what to look for, what right? Not to, you know right. what I mean? What right. to stand for? Who you are? All of that sort of stuff. And that's what it. That's what it really is. Like a lot of people be like, well, you know, a lot of things that you know they would frown up on that women do today, and you know, women should be free to do have whatever they want. But a lot of things that people might frown up on, you know, I don't particularly go down that route simply because I would rather my people have a lot of dignity and they would, I'd rather go out with respect. Right. But, you know. And earlier you said that some people look at you as being controversial. Mm -hmm. How controversial are you talking about? Like, explain that when you said. Well, they say, you know, nowadays people call it controversial when you have your own opinion of things and you are vocal about how you feel about things. Um you know, a couple of times, uh, particularly one particular time that I did go viral, it was because of what they would call controversial views on things that, you know, would affect many people. Like what? Tell me what happened. Um, So, you know, I'm on the Internet. I'm talking about things with Monica C. Murder, big issue that was going on at that time. Um, I guess somebody kind of screenshot a clip of some things that I was saying on Instagram and bought it to uh, World Star. Um, it went viral on World Star. I can remember clearly. I had to log offline for like two whole weeks because of it. I would see people in the streets, and they would really talk about it. So you know, when it comes to that, like that was somebody who they. It was that bad that they brought it to your face. It was, it was, it was that. You know, was, people, you know, today in society, everybody on social media talking crap, but when they see your face, it's like a totally different thing. Well, they didn't bring it to, of course they, to That's my face, like, she said. Right. So they didn't bring it to my face. It was more of a respect okay. from people who came to me. Okay. They were, they respected what I said and they okay, respected cool. that I did say it because nobody would, would say, say it. it. Okay. So it was more of a respect. No, nobody ever, only people came to me in a disrespectful way was the people of the internet, the internet, the typing gangsters. So, you know, the the grown men with kids my age with testosterone. I just so pathetic. Let me let me <laughs> let me go to uh 
I see your brother on your shirt. Yes. And that's the one you looked up to and that's of like course. a father. So let's let's talk about <clears throat> just walk us up to what you know, just uh him and because I, I, I didn't get to meet him, so I get to meet right. you. And you remember how I was with him and the music and all that good stuff, right? Yes, yes, yes. So let's talk about, you know, how he felt about the music. I know, shout out to KLC, he done, you know, told me, you know, different things, but I want to hear from you kind of how you felt about him and his movement in the music. Is that cool? That's very cool. So <laughs> my brother is actually, if you, some people might can't see my shirt, but so my brother's actually Soldier Slim. Um, I am his little sister. We have a 13 year yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, um, my brother was very, very passionate about music. I clearly remember um, at the age of four years old, my brother was getting picked up in limousines. Like they wow. was pulling my pulling up and stretch limousines to pick my brother up for shows. And he was only like 14 at that time. Like okay. my brother really been doing it since his teenage years. He was Magnolia Slim at that time. Um, and he's just always been passionate. Like he's always been an entrepreneur. Like he would, if, if he wasn't rapping, then he was cutting hair on the porch. So a lot of people know him off the parkway by ice cream. Cause he used to cut hair under that Monica. And um, when he started doing the music, it, it just was like, if you go back and listen to even me as an adult now, and I'll go back and listen to like tracks like powder bag and tracks like uh, kicking it for these dog ass hoes. Like, and this was a, a teenager, 14 years old that was spitting this stuff on these beats that just was like ridiculous. And it was on KL tracks. So a lot of people don't know because they didn't tell them that when they talked about it in the No Limit documentary. Um, but KL was actually the one who bought my brother to Master P. Okay, okay. So KL played a large role in that because at that time, that's when my brother was rapping in his basement, Correct. making music there. So KL really played a big, big role in that whole Soldier Slim sound at that time when he was young and coming up. Now, like I said, my brother ended up getting a track at, um, which one was on here? Uh, I Want It. Okay. I Want It, You Got It. That is a KL track. Yeah, yeah. I Want It, You Got It. And it actually, they put it on Down South Hustlers. And that's when he blew up. That's when he, um, they bought him, of course, to Master P. And he got the deal in the first album, of course, with Master P. And I believe he did at least two there. And that's when he switched over to Cutthroat Committee. So that's his own label. That's when he wanted to be on his own and wanted to do it for himself. That's when the little real ones came into the yeah. pictures. Chaotix came into the picture. Yeah. Um, all these people came into the picture. And um, we came into the picture. Hmm. OK. OK. And and so because, you know, a lot of people, you know, that was a thing. He was like the Tupac of, of just the New Orleans. The New Orleans yeah. music. Yes. The way he was, you know, they were kept. And it's, it's so much because he's authentic through. Yeah. It. He tells you his story of being from where he's from. Like, you don't even got to be from there. I remember one time, even now, though, it's still relevant. And I think that's what we all strive for as artists, at least. Me as an artist, I want my music to be timeless. Like yeah. my brother has been dead for at least 17 to 18 years. And when you put on tracks like I'll pay for it. Yeah. I still feel like she you got 150 spin it on me. You got to pay for it. Me and my friends, we in a club, buy the ball. But those tracks like that, it's still relevant. Love me, love me now. I mean, come on. I mean, it's still relevant to this day. And even, I mean, my favorite, I, when I was going through things at a job that I had, is soldier life mentality. Because I think we so often deal with it in our everyday life that it's kind of a norm when it really is not. But we deal with racism every day as black people. Yeah. And for him to have captured that at that time, he was way ahead of his time. And yeah. we're still dealing with that today. So this is a timeless thing. And I think that's why people love him. I think that's why people idolize him. Yeah, yeah, dope. Did you? What What's some of the craziest things that happened when people, uh, after he passed away, some things that you can remember people, you know, how they approach you when they found out you were Soldier Slim's sister? So even before, <laughs> like, because even before, like a lot of people think that my brother really, 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 he really blew up worldwide. But even before he died, he was like, he was big stuff in New Orleans. Yeah. So I remember one time he came, I was in the sixth grade. He came, picked me up from school. Okay. And I'm, you know, I'm not thinking no more. They're like, 
I'm I'm stayed somewhere too long. I was in the building, I think, playing, messing with my friends. And by the time I got outside, y'all, I tell y'all no, no lie. It had to be every child and their parent was surrounding the car. Now hey. this is in the French quarters. I was going to make down a 15 in the French quarters. And they are surrounding the cars. It's them and their parents. They like so just slim out your um signing autographs. They like, girl, I'm like I said, I'm still in the building. They like, girl. Girl, come outside. Soldier Slim outside. He was Magnolia Slim at that time. Magnolia Slim outside signing autographs. And I'm like, wait. Because I didn't even know my brother was supposed to be coming pick me up anyway. I'm like, that's my brother. What y'all What y'all mean? By the time I, like I said, I got outside, the whole damn yard has came out. And they are surrounding the car. And like I said, I never, we always, we... You know, you when you in people's family, you don't really you don't look at them like that. You don't that. look at them like yeah, that. So, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So you don't look at them like that. So you like, what is what y'all doing? <laughs> and um, but after he died, even after he died, like we every day, like now we have like if we come outside some days, they got a whole bus of people, and they like, hey, we on a tour. They we've gone to the different soldier slim sites in this part of the tour. We like wait part of the tour. So because he used to live there, they want yeah come they want to come there. The you know, and that's why he died too. He died at the house. Yeah, so you my know, brother. He, yeah, he, he got killed at the house. He got killed at the house. I want to yeah. like I said now. I don't want to. Uh, if you want to talk about it, we can. I because I want to talk about that day. Just kind of you know where were you, where, where were you at, and, and how you how did how did it affect? It's your brother, of course, but right. it's been years now. It, can we talk about it? You know, yeah. like how was that that day? Like when when this all happened? Um, so I remember it was like uh, I would, we wasn't home. So my mom, like I said, she's a lady bug jumper. So it was like probably like a week before their second line. And um, so they were really getting like close together. So we were at my aunt's house. My aunt lives like probably like six, seven minutes from us. And um, we all talking about this is when Love Me, Love Me Not was about to drop. So he had just. Um, show everybody was just seeing the video and talk about how good the video was. Like this was the one that was going to put him to the next level. Nobody was messing with this video. He shot it at tip of Tina's like, it was like a live band and everything. So we knew that this was like one of those moments that was going to propel him to the next moment. Um, and just like we sitting there, we talking and they just call on the phone. Like he had been shot. So, you know, my brother been shot before. So, you know, we like, okay, he been shot. Is he okay? It was like, we don't know. It's really bad this time. And, um, you know, so all I remember is my mom running down the street about my auntie house to run to the scene. And uh, we end up going there before her. It was me and my cousin. We end up driving up before her because we had to let her know because she didn't want to go um, at that time. So we end up going before her. And, um, and everything was still there? Everything we was yeah everything because it just had happened like it didn't okay, just so happen. You made that before the police did. The police were there. Okay, they were there. The crime people were there, and um, all you could see was him laying next to the steps. And they didn't even cover him up or nothing. No, so it was like you know, like I said, it was still the coroner's hadn't came or anything. Right. So we was like, well, is he still alive? And I remember clearly, they was like, no. And all we could do was just, all we could do was just stand there. Cause you know you you never think that people are you know you never think here that one day and then you're gone then you go on the next I'm sorry no you are fine you never you just never think I'm sorry no. it's all good we'll get you some tissue yeah I don't but, know I get it yeah yeah you just never think but uh so and to <clears throat> see that that's the problem you know because. That image can never go away, and I think that affects you even more than if you hadn't seen it. If, you know yeah, what I mean? You know, because you think you're going there, you're going to see them people again, but you're really not. So I think my whole thing was just how was we going to tell my mm -hmm. mom? Because my mom and my brother, like we said, I'm, we like 14 years apart. But they were on their way down there. She, yeah. But we so had did to go. she end up coming to we see? We end up, so by the time her. We, we got back to tell them that he was gone, my mom was like running to... Mm -hmm. running down the street to my AT house and mm -hmm. she was we we intercepted so she like y'all what happened and we told her we was like you know he gone and that's a moment that 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 always gonna scar me to see my mama and how she dropped to know that he it was done 
she fell out. Yeah, she just. Of course, because yeah. you're you know, a mom now, right? Yeah, I'm a mom now, and I know. And I think that affects you even more because, like, for me personally, I never experienced anything like what you're experiencing. But you know how, like, when you watch sentimental movies and stuff like yeah, that, you, you didn't feel, cry. Yeah. You, you did not cry before you have kids. But, but once you, you start having kids, it's like it's different. Everything makes you, you cry. cry. Yeah, especially if they're talking about children. Children and oh somebody's my God, child. Because like you can put yourself in that person's position and you feel, and it. You feel it. You feel it. So it's totally different. So like even just knowing that she's a mother and, and she, yeah. have to endure that. But then for me, it's like once. I'm in tune with God now where cause I was raised in the church and all of that. But I think when you really find God later on as an adult, right. And you know that everything happens for a reason. Everything and it's does. bad that of how some things happen terribly. And that makes people question like, how can there be a God if they go like this? Or right. If they go like that. But like I tell everybody, and when I tell people things, I'm not telling them for them. I'm telling them also for myself because it can happen to, to anybody. anybody. Yep. So yep, yep, I'm yep. trying to heal myself in a lot of different ways. So I'm just saying it to say this, that when things like that happen, you have to really, you had so many good memories with him. Right. You had so many learning lessons. You have hold on to those things. And you can't make the bad overpower because Co- that, it can correct. easily happen where it can fill you up with hate and anger and you tend to forget about all of the good all things. All the good things. Because you got to think about like, God forbid, but if you go, what do you want your kids to remember exactly. you? How do you want your family to remember you? So you have to think about those things. You don't want them to be, you know, this, this filled of hatred mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. anger and can't move on and you know what I mean? I got you. So you it. have to, you have to, um, honor that person's memory in that type of way where right. they want to know that he would love to know that his sister is good. His sister is flourishing. His mm. sister, his mama is good. His mama is flourishing. flourishing. Right. You know what I mean? He don't want nobody to, yes, you're going to mourn because we're human beings. We're going to feel sad. We're going to cry every now and again. You got to let it out when you have to let it out. Mm-hmm. You don't want to hold that thing in. Yep. Cause it can deteriorate your body in so many different ways. But I love the fact that y'all keeping his memory alive. I yes, keep talking yes, yes. about him because that's what you're doing. Yes. The more you talk about him is the more people not going to forget about him. The more people going to know about him. Some people who maybe never heard of him before. They going to know that. They going to know about <laughs> him now. You know what I mean? It, it, and, it, and that's how it translates. So even 20 years later, I mean, 10 year olds like, yo, that's way before your time. Mm. But they know I'll pay for it. And they know these songs and they know who he is. And I think... Even though it's sad that he's not any longer here with us, he's right. still here with us. Because every day you hear a new story about how great of a person he was. Mm-hmm. And I mean, not too many people. Sometimes when people die, you know, that's it for him. He had children. Yes. My nephew. I have oh. one, I have one okay. nephew. So, so he carry on his... Yeah. Did he end up trying to come in the music industry? Yes. Right. My nephew is a rapper too. Oh, okay. How yes. old is he? He is 26 years old. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, he's 26 years old. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Little soldier slum. That's good. Yeah. Music is just all up in your family. Yeah, it? just everywhere. All running through the bloodline. <laughs> love it. Love it, love that it, love is it. Cool. And how is he hand- handling, you know, because he was how old when it happened? He probably was like eight, eight or nine. So oh, really? I know he remember because you can remember when your daddy bought you them Gucci shoes. Mm-hmm. I know he, he can, can remember. remember <laughs> yeah, the times that they had. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure he remembers. Um, you know, but y'all are there for him. I was there for him and pulled him through all of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so we just, you know, everybody tells him stories. Like I said, we always hear a new story yeah. every day. Sometimes when people die, you don't get to hear anything about them. But we get a, every time we meet somebody, it's something that he did that have you thinking he like Jesus in the second coming. Tell me a story that you heard that you never knew about your brother that somebody told you. So my mom loves to tell us when they had a lady, um, at that time, she was going through cancer, so her head was bald. Mm-hmm. And she said she didn't know from A to Z, like, who is Soldier Slim? Mm-hmm. She just heard everybody saying, Soldier Slim is here, Soldier Slim is here. She said she went over there and she told him, hey, I don't know you. And don't talk about me because I got a bald head now. And said, he kissed on her head. She said, Aww. she said, girl, look at my hair. My mom said, she seen it. She said, girl, I got a full head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> a full head of hair then somebody told me a story it was like um, the house ended up burning down mm-hmm. and they didn't have anywhere to go and then they say he can't pick them up personally and bought them to live with him 
And it's like all the stories you hear. You see, that's why I tell people all the time. When you live life, don't live life for yourself. You live it for others. Other because people, yep. when you go, you got to leave the memories. That's the mm-hmm. one thing you got to leave. If it's everything you're doing is just for you, ain't nobody going even. You got a lot of people that's selfish. But right. I mean, given you're going to always, even if you don't get the recognition for it at that time, people yeah, appreciate people, it. Yeah, people, because... When you live your life for yourself, don't live it for gratification, not for people to come to you and say, oh, my God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't live it like that. You know, it, just know that if you're living your life right and doing what you're supposed to be doing, helping others, the reward is going to be there. Exactly. That's wow. all I got to say. Well, hey, man, you know, like um, you just, like I said, you gave us that story. I wanted to ask about that because that's the elephant in the room. Of Always, course. Uh, you know, um, and that matters. It you know, does. that people hear your side of what was going on. That matters a lot because a lot of people don't know kind of what happened leading up to it. The ones right. that wasn't around during that time are people who really love the music now and listen to his music. They don't know. They don't know. And but, they always think that. They're like, she don't know. She wasn't around at that time. She's too young. I'm like, I was a teenager, baby. <laughs> old teenager, teenager, right? I yeah, know, like, I know about to, that. I got an old soul. Yeah, right, like, I'm, I'm a teenager, baby. I was, yeah. I'm not that young. I just look good. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when you think about just where music is down here in New Orleans and just in the South period, like, um, you know, um, how, how does it? How do you think we're doing? I'm excited about the way music is going in New Orleans now because we're finally. Um, I think eyes are finally shifting here now. And I, I, for one, I will admit that I thought it wouldn't, but just all the things that's playing up to now, like even my brother, um, he just, we just about to shoot a show for him. He's going to be on hip hop homicides. Okay. Um, so even that just coming back to the city, a lot of people are coming to check out the music. A lot of people are coming to check out the filming industry. The Pelicans just was doing great in the playoffs. Like, so we getting a lot of eyes on the city and I think, that's going to work wonders for even the music. So I'm excited for the way that it's going. And I'm excited for the doors that's opening. And if you're watching, come and mess with us. We got some good stuff going on. Who would you like to work with in the, in the industry? Um, Man, my ultimate goal, I'm telling you, once I once I get my song with Beyonce, I'm tapped out. <laughs> t- I don't need to do nothing else. Once I get my song with Beyonce, I'm good. That's it. That's it. I don't that's, a, that's a hell of a color. Have you ever reached out to her? No, no, that's a problem. Then how you gonna get it? No, see, cause I gotta get right first. I can't just be reaching out. You don't never, don't never. You don't know what God can do. Let me just play. Let me say that right, right now. You don't know what God could do. You, 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 you don't absolutely even know. Right. You unless you throw you it could out be there. Right for her right now. You yes. don't know. You, you're right. She might say, you know what, girl, I've been waiting to do something with somebody from New Orleans, and bam, and then you like what? And then I'm right. And God just opening <laughs> up doors that no man can shut. Well, Beyonce. <laughs> Yeah, I see. No, Sis. like, like, what do you think? Which, which, which one of your songs do you feel like is the most solid one that you've done? Cash App. Yeah, Cash App. Cash App is that, my favorite GI Peacher song. Really? Er, overall, I've made a lot of songs, but that's my favorite. Why see, is that's that your different. Favorite? That's different. Because I feel like I, I'm always like being so just let me sister. I'm always like stuck to like the hard side of it. And I feel like for Cash App, I got to show people a different side of me. I got to show people a different artistry that I am an artist. I could make music. I don't just have to make gangster music. I can mm-hmm. make music. I could, you know, I could do what the other girls are doing. Okay. Wow. Cash App. And, and it, okay. Is that one that uh, you feel like is uh, the one that, that is there going to ever be one to be better? You think you can top it? Oh, I could top Cash. I probably top Cash App already. Do you, you have something in the vault? I have a couple things in the vault. A couple things in the vault. A couple, especially new things, because the new production just turned me to a, to a beast. But a couple things in the works. I got a couple things in my vault. So when you coming out with your new project? So I'm working on it now. So I've been trying to mix being a brand new mom and with the music. So I'm working on that, and I think I finally got the timing because my daughter's about to make one. So I get a and little you got more a beautiful food. daughter. Thank you. Like my daughter's finally about to make one, so now you know I got a little more freedom, right? A little more. And how easy or how hard is it juggling, you know, artistry with being a mom? Oh my goodness! Are you a single mom or I am? Okay, I am a single mom, so it's like it's it's even harder. Mm-hmm. But I'm learning a lot about myself, 
in a mess. Like you never know who you really are when, until I, people say you have a kid. And that's true. Mm -hmm. Cause I really didn't know. Let me tell you, children will, I would say children will teach you patience, but sometimes it, or it'll show you that you have no patience. patience exactly. <laughs> it shows me I have none. I don't know. <laughs> it you shows not. me I have none. Yes. But, um, okay. I want to go right a little bit back into the soldier slim a little bit because mm -hmm. I am, I know a little bit, but I, cause I'm from Jamaica. So I don't know a lot about a lot of stuff. Okay. But how did he die? So he was, he was killed. Like, he was shot. Did they find out who? They found out the guy who killed him, but he ended up being let out of jail. Um, so then they found out that it was possibly he got paid ten thousand dollars for a hit. And um And they don't know who? No. It just, you know, ended at that point. Wow. Okay, and y'all couldn't fight anything, try to I mean, with the New Orleans justice system, that's just the way it goes. I know. That's why I have, we had a, a person on here earlier talking about the justice system here. And, yeah, just saying, you know, hopefully they'll get things changed. Do you think it ever changed? No. It's too much corruption. Wow. So just when you think about um, just uh, the way that um, um, C. Murder mm -hmm. is locked up. And you, I heard you say earlier about just... Uh, kind of, you know, something that went on with you, you know, as far as you conversating on that. Um, that whole, the, that all that stuff run together to you. It, it does. It's, you know, it's just like people say, it's just in the bloodline. Like, you know, my brother ran was he murdered one of his, yeah. you know, they make a lot of music together. So, you know, it's all love over here when they come to see murder. It's, it's always been love. It's always been respect. It's always been you know, a good relationship. Yeah, yeah. And only I ask that is because of the fact of he's still trying to fight to get out. And yeah, that. yeah. So, you know, so free C murder, you know, make sure y'all support that whole movement and really recognize like what's really, really going on. I mean, at this point, it's kind of like, what is it an example? Yeah. You know, to be shown because it's like, you know, but it's been he, so many years. Like, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, even like you already still, shown your done, example. He done. Like, he's done, done so much time. And I mean, like, what now? What? Right. You know, his kids are grown, gr you know, grandkids. Like, I mean, come on. How much of a debt to society, you know, does he owe? Right. You know, is it because of who he is? I mean, at this point, that's that's what it is. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, you got an unanonymous jury. Now y'all running all these other cases back and, you know, going back to trial for it. So what's really going on here? So like I said, you know, that's why I say corruption when it comes to that. Because it's like, you ain't playing their game, so they got another game they won't play. Won't play, that's it. I mean, you know, that's the way they try. It's like, like we want to show you we, we, we in charge. You know? Exactly. And, and, and no matter how much money you got, no matter what, we still Who you charge. are, you still, what, what Jay-Z say, we still nigga. Still <laughs> nigga. <laughs> still nigga. Still nigga. Man, um, just, um, just uh, I don't know, um, I was supposed to get the 16 out of her, wasn't I? Yes. Yeah, you ready for what, that 16? What kind of beat you on? What you got? You got some trap. Whatever you need. You got some trap. You got that trap. She said trap you got, music. She wants some trap music. Yeah, give me, let me see if I can mess with some trap, you know? Okay. Okay, Shoot, I wanted to know about this drink. <laughs> like, how did you get that? Oh, that's that exotic yeah, pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's right. here in, 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 yeah, in the speakers. Yeah, you can do that one. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, like uh-huh. Hold, yeah. hold, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's hold bring that back. Let's bring you in. What? Damn, man, hold on. I want to save you. Did you follow us on IG yet? No, y'all didn't What's your IG? Me. I'm just getting here. What's your IG, babe? Project, Project Barbie. Project Barbie. Project Barbie. Project Barbie. D E. D E. D E. D A. D A. Okay. I'm for the follow you now because I'm the same as you, but I watch you because of KL. I was just like, I'm, they, they, I didn't think they was ready for you to come out yet. Oh, no. They, they, they not, I guess. But I be coming out on my own. But you see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's why I never did bother you because I'm like, he just starting to work with them. <laughs> Okay, because follow me back. This E C E O, you gonna right, see me. I got it. I'm going. You already doing it. Okay, I got you right here. We feel we gonna go with that beat. Okay. I think we can rock that. I think we, we can rock it. Let's see. Give me Let's sixteen, see. man. Go on, man. Let's just, see. Let's I, see. Gonna yeah, have to, we're gonna see if I can get you sixteen. I might could go a little bit, but we're gonna see. Okay, okay. whatever gonna you see. can give me, we're gonna take it. it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we're Let's gonna make. See. Let's get to it, man. Yeah. You ready, Stell? We going back in, man. Check it, man. Hey, man. 
Say, man, Project Barbie in the building, man. We about to go down through that one time, man. It's on Boss Talk 101. What a bosses talk, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Let's go, big dog. Let's get it. Yo. Look at these diamonds, they all on my neck You know that my flex, my flex be the best Look at this pussy, you know I don't text a nigga When he text me, I might not text back Look at these diamonds, know that they flawless All of these niggas be calling, I'm gorgeous Niggas know I be high, I be falling Making these niggas falling, they be dogging Look at my jewels, look at me I'ma be, who I'ma be That you know it's me I'm from the three, you don't know it's me Come from the streets, you don't know it's me Come from the best, I be rocking the Hey man, stop playing man Why you gonna Go down through that like that open, Hold man. Up. I you, ain't like, even... you, you, you just getting warmed up, baby. Yeah, I'm just getting warmed up. I see up, you on that. Look at me, look at me. Look. I, I, nigga, I could have a couple times. I, I could have been a rapper, nigga, if I'd have tried. I'm gonna give me yo. You got this. You got this. This this just you. They call it swag and all. It, you, you just that it factor. Like, I just like, try. She no, 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 she gonna do. She gonna do it. She doesn't hesitate. Like her, she don't back she down. Don't back no, down. I'm gonna try. It. I'm gonna yeah, try. That's it. what I like. Man, I'm I love. Try I love it. I'm gonna that's pick something. Get... I pick stuff out, and then I, I, I'm gonna make it to it. I need yeah. it anyway. I love the fact that you, you came on Boss Talk 101. KLC, I think he picked the right one to be honest with you. Uh, that's uh, what they say. Did, did, so how did you meet KLC? Well, like I said, my brother was big. With KL, so I've known KL for a long, long time. Now, I call him KLC because that's what they, I, you know, because I know his name and all that. But KL, some people say KL, some people say KLC. We, we just shut it up, you know, from yeah. New Orleans. <laughs> Nobody ever says the whole thing like in New Orleans. Not y- in New y- Orleans. Y- y'all Jamaican then, because that's what my wife. That's did. you know when we I used to. It up. Yeah, when I used to live in Houston, and they used to they that what they would say. You y'all talk Jamaican, and I'm like I never. But you know what? I hear a lot of people tell me that up. a lot of people would say, "Oh, you from New Orleans?" And I'm yeah, like, they say because we no, chop up the words. And I never. I, I'm like no They talk totally different, different uh-huh. But Let me tell you I think it's Depends on what part mm. Of New Orleans Or Louisiana Because let me tell you I met one person <laughs> Just one person That's from Out here And they had me food Really? I'm yeah like, Cause it's like The different part That you come from Like I'm from uptown So we talk a lot uh, faster Right We talk a lot lot faster So they be like Wait what you say? Even at work they it's like, not the fast. Saying? It's just it's the dialect. It's the, not the speed. So it's, the, it's, it's the dialect. Because I it's never understand the way, what they say it. It's, it's the like way how. Jamaican. It's the way. Is the accent. It's the way how you speak oh. compared to the way how that person spoke. And I was like, "Now you are you Jamaican?" And like, "No, I'm from New Orleans." <laughs> I'm like, "Okay, okay." Well, we, 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 I see it. Okay, we well, we can then. We all. <laughs> we all you know, can. Jamaica, we having parishes just like y'all. Really? We have parishes. See? Mm-hmm. More like than, than we know. Mm-hmm. Man. My so. sis really from Jamaica too. <laughs> <laughs> Not Jamaica. Yeah, no, real, real talk. But, you know, we uh, top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Dead or alive. Any, Any genre. Any genre. genre. Okay, so number three, I got to go with Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne is okay, just so cool. Three, Lil, Wayne. Lil number Wayne. Number two, I'm going to put Beyonce at number two. Okay. Mm, number two. Number one. The number one overall artist for me is going to have to be Lil Kim. Really? Why I Lil Kim? Because she was everything. From the fashion to the music to the sex appeal to the she was everything. She was heavy, wasn't she? Ooh, Man, might look she, like, but she heavy. had that. She had that 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 attitude. I just yeah. love her. I yeah. just even like. Have you ever met her? I've never met her, but I did go to a a Lil Kim concert when it was at the Masquerade. I made sure I wasn't missing that. <laughs> I love Lil Kim. Really? I really, really love Lil' Kim. Like, I don't remember. I remember a lot of female artists during that time. Like, because I'm really big on, like, the whole 2000, the 90s, 2000 hip-hop scene. Like, I love it. So, I was real big on Lil' Kim. Like, that's my girl. Can't nobody say nothing about her. I love Lil' Kim. Well, we appreciate you for coming on the show. Of course. And uh, did we leave anything out? How can people get a hold of you if they want to link Well, let me tell you about me. Let me tell you about (laughs) a little girl from Uptown. So if you're looking for me, I'm actually on Instagram. I'm The Project Barbie. So that's D-A-P-R-O-J-E-C-T-B-A-R-B-I-E. Beautiful. The Project Barbie. Or you could just look up GI Peaches on your phone because I'm all in your iTunes store, Apple Music, Spotify. I'm all when, over. When the next project coming out, what can we when can we expect it? Let's see. 
I, I'm not really sure of a date for the next project, but my new single did drop, no second guessing, and a video just came out too. So go check that out. Man, thank you so much, man. Did, did, did you forget, did you miss anything? No, that's it. Everything good? I got it. What we done it? Yes, man. We did. We hey, did the check damn it, thing. We love you. Thank y'all for Peaches. having me. You know I'm small time, so for y'all to come seek New Listen, Orleans man. and get me. You crazy. This is why I came, right? Mm -hmm. I knew why I was coming to, to, I knew which artists I was, knew I could get because of who I'm connected to. See? So I knew that. I knew, I, I just like, I don't know where I'm going to do it at, but when I go there, I know I'm getting a deal with, I didn't say Peaches, though. I said Project Bar because that's how I knew Same. You. I found that out today, so I'm kicking it. You know what I'm saying? Pump so, Daddy P did it. But Same then people. as soon as you called me on the phone and you was immediately like, yeah, let's do this, let's, let's do, do that. You love the fact of you a helper. I know when I come to New Orleans now, stop, man. Come on, man. I'm going to call Peaches, nigga. It's up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know the places to go. Hey, Tell man. How, why can't I give me something good to eat this evening? And so, it ain't going to be hard to get to. Well, look. Keep it in the neighborhoods. What kind of food you looking for, though? I love seafood. You like seafood? Seafood. Mm -hmm. So okay. I do dirty rice and I do steak. I do whatever. He want, yeah. He, I'm, but I'm, I'm, you picky food eater, so yeah. you can't say whatever. Well, y'all should just definitely go check out Niao's. Nia House? Yeah, it's called Niao. Nia? Spell it. N E Y O. -W. That's a big shout out, too. Oh, yeah, Nia. that's my people. Oh, okay. That's yeah, your that's people? That's my people. they cool. they real cool. Like, you know, all my boyfriends bring, <laughs> <laughs> bring me down. She said, all the boyfriends bring her there. Y'all better stop. All my niggas bring me down. It's not that far from here. Well, y'all way over here. Yeah, but we're going back. We're going we downtown. downtown. Oh, yeah, that's close to downtown. Okay. Yeah, that's where we're going anyway. We, yeah. We got to go there. You got to check, check it, man. What kind of food? Seafood? They got seafood. They got all that. They yeah. cook all that. They cook Cajun. Okay, is it always packed? Uh, what's the date? Well, now okay. I ain't gonna say I'm gonna say y'all somewhere else off camera. Yeah, I'm gonna say y'all somewhere else off camera. I ain't gonna say y'all there. Okay, okay. Yeah. check it, man. Hey, man, we love you, Project Barbie, aka yes, Peaches. You always, and when you come to Dallas, you coming on Boss Talk in the studio. You already know that. Put me on the list. Damn it, man! I can just bring you up. Uh, you look. You could sketch me in. I'm gonna come <laughs> check it, man. They in trouble, dude. They in trouble. They in I'm trouble. Coming. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.